That's brilliant. Um, as time's rushing on, I want to move on to Bronwyn to talk about um, her role in what she's been doing with local government. Um, are you there, Bronwyn? Yes, she is there. Good. Over to you, Bronwyn. Thank you, Carol, for this opportunity to talk about one of my passions. I would like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land, the Jaja Wurrung, on which I'm speaking from today, and I would also like to pay my respects to Elders past, present and emerging. Firstly, a little bit of the background about my climate change journey. I grew up on a cropping and grazing farm in north central Victoria, and we were virtually self-sufficient. There was no garbage collection service and everything was recycled and we rode our bikes nearly three miles to the local primary school. Earlier um, in June 2020, I was amazed when Liz Arnott and Brian Canty from Ringwood North in Melbourne announced in the age they were putting their garbage bin out for the first time in 12 months. And this was what motivated me to produce my five R's of waste management. Reduce, reuse, recycle, rethink and repair. My, five, my three brothers are still farming around the same area I grew up in and have watched on and I've watched on as their farming practices have changed in response to changing weather patterns and increased scientific knowledge of their, the younger generation, my nephews such as reducing the number of times they turn or disturb the soil, changing the way they carry out burns, growing an increased variety of crops to improve soil and planting more trees to prevent erosion. After school, I chose to go from farming to pharmacy and my pharmacist training and career has further educated me in the problems with changes to our climate and how policy inaction threatens Australian lives. The thunderstorm asthma event in Melbourne in November 2016 was a particularly scary event for Melbourne-based health professionals. Additionally, the black summer bushfires of 2019-2020 were another call to action, particularly the breathing difficulties many experienced and the need to stay indoors. Increasing summer temperatures are of concern for the vulnerable who cannot afford to install or operate air conditioners and may suffer heat stress on extreme heat days. In 2018, I was given the opportunity to undertake the Loddon Mallee Community Leadership Program. And this gave me exposure to the First Nations people who have had a dialogue with nature for tens of thousands of years. And I learned their way of thinking that humans lived on the land but the land also lived and breathed inside us and there was moral reciprocity to this relationship. And after the May 2019 federal election, I think Tony is still lis is listening into this. Hang on, we've gone quiet. No. Hang on. After you've, gone, you've, you've muted. Yeah. It was all right. Yeah, I, was no, rather, I don't know. Accidentally what, um, muted you. Yeah. But, um, Sorry. Anyway, mm -hmm. Tony, a local retired teacher, was extremely concerned about climate change and how it would impact on his grandchildren. And he decided to act decisively and set about holding a climate action rally at our local resource centre. He joined forces with the Goldfield Sustainability Group, necessary for insurance purposes, but with members basically on the same journey. And he was, he was going to be happy if 50 people turned up, was delighted when 250 attended. Speakers were young and old and included a former resident actively involved in climate change in a neighbouring shire. The fire brigade was also attended as they were aware of the increased bushfire risk. As a result of that rally, the Maribor Climate Action Group came together with an approximately 12 active members, including myself, as I was now retired, and COVID had prevented me from traveling as planned. So this group has met regularly over the past two years. We've delivered a request for a declaration of climate emergency to politicians. We've run media public education events, come actively engaged with council administrators until COVID restrictions set in. 
We've lobbied all candidates who stood for our local council elections last year with some success, we feel. We've run kitchen table conversations for our local Department of Water, Environment, Land and Planning. And Tony's been guest speaker at various community groups. We've made two formal presentations to the Central Goldfield Shire Council and to new councillors with a request for the appointment of a sustainability officer. We've identified an extensive list of potential local mitigation and adaptation issues, um, actions, and we've partnered with the Central Goldfield Shire, Meribah Education Centre and the Goldfield Sustainability Group to begin a collaboration to develop a community climate action plan. What would the group like to see? We'd like to raise awareness of climate change, energy and sustainability in our community, community education, ensure the elderly and the vulnerable are looked after, take advantage of renewals initiatives and schemes on offer by all levels of government, work with farmers to make, help make agriculture more sustainable, promote electric vehicles and charging stations, promote the use of trains, walking, riding bikes, and to become a leader, aim to become a leader, think big, take inspiration from Helen Haynes, the member for, independent member for INDI, Let's not get left behind with benefits to, to the economy and jobs. So in July 2020 this year, the Central Goldfields community came together to develop a response to climate change in our region. And the Central Goldfields Climate Action Collaboration was formed, it's a community-led initiative, initiated through a partnership between, as I said before, the Climate Action Group, the Sustainability Group, the Mayor of Education Centre and the Shire. A core team was established with representatives from all groups. Their role was to undertake foundational planning and continue to drive the project throughout its duration. And I'm a member of that core team. A design team of about 20 was formed from individuals in our community that the core team members approached directly. These people represent passionate residents, community groups, schools, business, industry and agriculture, as well as local health emergency and community support services. And the idea was to um, the design team to come together over five three hour workshops. They've been delayed with the restrictions of COVID-19 and the inability to meet face to face. But um, we've got another core team meeting on Tuesday to chart a way forward. That's great. Oh, yeah, over the design process, it was intended this group will reach out to critical friends to gather further insights, concerns and ideas. And then we've got the plage planned major initiative to identify how our community is impacted by holding community climate kitchen table conversations. So they're primarily a listening activity, not debates or information sessions, usually involve six to 10 people, allocate one minute for each person to answer each question, require a facilitator and a note keeper to answer all the questions. And we intend to be asking three questions. What do you like and value about living in the Central Goldfields region? How do you see what you value being impacted by climate change? And what can our community do to strengthen and protect what we value? Wow. So yeah, um, that's the journey for the Central Goldfields Climate Action Collaboration so far. We still have a way to go with several obstacles upsetting the planned pathway. I have found getting involved in my local community very rewarding and would like to recommend it to all if time allows. Many of, in our shire, our knowledge workers are drive in and drive out. So we are short on community members with skills or the desire to take on leadership positions. But I keep in mind a saying, Decisions are made by those who turn up. So I turn up and I hope to have an impact on um, increasing the climate change education of our community members. Yeah. That's brilliant. Thank you so much, Bronwyn, that's great. I think you've inspired a lot of us to see what we can do with our own communities and um, just to step up to actually take a role. Um, that's just brilliant, well done. Uh, would you mind if people had any questions if they came to you by email afterwards and just emailed you if they had any questions about your experiences? Because I'm time's pressing on and I just, um, I, I would love, don't want people to miss out. <laughs> okay, well, we'll move on and um, 
uh, we've got a few things to get through, but thank you again. That was brilliant, brilliant. I uh, just want to check if the um, if the screen is going. Yes, we had Bronwyn. Um, there's a photograph here of Bronwyn actually riding her bicycle 2,000 kilometers to raise money for charity a few years ago. So um, she's always been a bit of a mover and shaker. Um, 